Hi, uh, very good morning to all of you. And thank you so much for uh, taking out the time and the overwhelming response to uh, our webinar invite. And uh, the topic today is, as you must have seen on the screen, uh, COVID-19 in India, the workforce management and related employment law considerations. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to inform you that we have kept this webinar with a time slot of 45 minutes. Uh, we will have 25 minutes for uh, the speaker and the balanced 25 minutes are devoted to questions which we have either received from our attendees at the time of registration and also the questions which will flow in course of the webinar just to let you know uh, we will be taking in questions in course of the webinar you can type it out uh, in the window which you will see before in front of your screen we will take those questions in the end in that 25 minutes time slot and if needed we can also extend it to another 15 minutes given the sensitivities involved and the number of questions which we will receive or we expect to receive next slide please so just uh, a quick introduction uh, about myself uh, i am anshul uh, i am a partner with the employment labor and benefits practice at khatan and company uh, i work out of the mumbai office i lead the practice nationally and uh, we thought it best uh, to next slide please So in terms of the agenda, we thought it best to uh, cover the current situation because it is not something which I'm going to really speak about when it comes to maintaining basic hygiene or uh, ensuring the essential measures which have been suggested or advised by and recommended by WHO uh, and Ministry of Health and Family Welfare as well as appropriate governments across the states. The mood point right now, what we see coming in from uh, all the sectors across industries is in relation to uh, the very clear perspective on what we need to do in these circumstances. How do we manage our workforce? How do we take care of the wage aspects? How do we look at the government lockdown directives? We are asked to shut down. How do we continue our operations? with minimal number of staff and I'm covering both the aspects whether you are exempted as a service or as a continuous operation establishment from an essential commodities or essential services standpoint what are the possible workforce considerations which will come into play and in terms of contingency planning during the extended lockdown period and even from a future standpoint what exactly are we supposed to do and these questions keep coming up in the last few days ever since the lockdown was announced by the prime minister of india next slide please so very quickly on uh, the current situation as of 27 march 9 a.m this is the statistics which our team has come up with and it is all over the media a total of 677 cases that includes foreign nationals 17 fatalities so far and 67 have been discharged all of us are aware borders have been sealed all domestic and international flights have been suspended grounded public and private transport all have been halted only emergency services continue to operate and that too i'll cover this point from a practical perspective because all of us are aware there is a difference between what is there on paper and what really exists on the streets in this country at the moment. We all are aware that cities across the country are under complete lockdown mode, especially the police personnel. It seems have been mandated to ensure that people are not venturing out. It is very difficult for the industry to really explain to their employees who are required to render critical and essential services in their establishments 
to convince the police personnel as to why they are applying on the roads at present. So we will be covering all these points and very quickly the official information sources are all there. Uh, I will not really touch upon the aspects of what you need to refer to because we are looking at a situation where people are in the industry are aware of what really to look for when it comes to essential hygiene and sanitation related aspects or when it comes to social distancing in your establishment. Finance Minister of India yesterday at 2 p.m. IST did make some announcements in terms of relief package for uh, the general public as well as in terms of some measures which could be of benefit for smaller industries. The most important part which I can see here is the Provident Fund contribution aspect. We haven't really come across an official communique or notification in this regard so far. But I think it is important for everybody to consider the fact that on the Provident Fund aspect, the central government would cover both employer and employee contribution for the next three months. And the eligibility criteria for those establishments is essentially having up to 100 employees. And amongst those 100 employees, at least 90% are those who earn less than 15,000 per month. So they have considered the current statutory base ceiling under the EPF Act and taken at a benchmark when it comes to providing this relief for the industry. And there are also some relaxation on withdrawal of provident funds. So what I can see is from the perspective of providing some support to the industry or the smaller players, this is the only relief which we can see and not in the backdrop of various advisories which are being issued by appropriate governments across the state as well as the Union Ministry of Labor and Employment advising industries all across to continue uh, making salary payments to employees during the lockdown period. Next slide, please. So very quickly, uh, it's a nationwide lockdown situation. We are looking at at least the initial period, which has been extended to 14th April 2020, pursuant to announcement which has been made by the Prime Minister. Effective uh, 25th of March, midnight. And the problem which exists before all of us today is the inconsistency which exists. Now, if you refer to the guidelines which have been issued by the Union Home Secretary, there are certain aspects which we feel ought to be either mirrored in the state government notifications and orders which came in the last one week or so starting or beginning 21st March and up to 24th March 2020. There are several inconsistencies which you see. Now, whether it is Karnataka, whether it is Maharashtra or Telangana or Andhra Pradesh or Haryana or Noida, there are different orders what would be essential commodity, what would be essential services, what establishments are exempted, somewhere the confusion continues to exist. And in that context, I would like to caution you all that don't assume that what you perceive as essential for your business could be deemed to be essential service from the perspective of how the government authorities are going to look at it. The situation is ever evolving at present. You need to be mindful of having appropriate advice in place by referring to the existing extant orders and circulars by the state governments concerned and not just rely on the Union Home Secretary guidelines. I repeat, these guidelines are only guidelines and advisories to the state governments for them to follow. The only state which has come up with a revised lockdown order so far, which we have come across is the state of Maharashtra, which earlier had an omnibus, for example, an omnibus order for IT, IT establishments to continue to remain open, including those which are involved in telecom, banking, and other essential services, including internet. But now, if you look at the guidelines read with the state government, 
of Maharashtra order, it talks about IT, IT establishments only engaged and catering to essential services. Also, in terms of manufacturing establishments, very quick examples on, on many of those aspects and the questions which I have been addressing for several days now is that whether my process, my manufacturing setup can be deemed or can be assumed to be something which ought to be continuous. Now, my advice to everybody who is attending this webinar is don't assume things. From an overall standpoint, let me tell you a kind of commonality which exists between all the orders which we have come across so far across the country by appropriate governments in, from the perspective of lockdown is that warehouses which are pertaining to essential services and commodities supply chain, they can be opened. We are talking about essential commodities like health and sanitation products, pharmaceuticals, medical devices, food packaging, food processing. Now, as of now, there is confusion all across because in some states, when you talk about Swiggy, Zomato and other uh, e-commerce uh, retail companies, whether they can operate through their delivery agents. I'll give an example of Karnataka where an order has been issued by the Bangalore Police Commissioner that e-commerce delivery agents can be issued curfew passes. You need to be on the watch out, on the lookout for orders of this nature because there is a confusion in the minds of police personnel on ground. Let me repeat, the people who are there on the street do not really tend to ne negotiate with people, do not get convinced that easily. So don't assume things, even if you are falling in the exempted category on the face of it, by plain reading of those circulars, always make attempts and try to have an intimation at least sent out to the local administration concerned. And when I say local administration, it could be the concerned municipal body or the municipal commissioner. If you are falling within the limits of a district, it will be the district collector, district magistrate or deputy commissioner. If you are looking at some metropolitan cities, it will be the commissioner of police. For example, in Mumbai, he is the competent authority to allow you to function or he will be the competent authority to receive any intimations where you immediately inform the competent authority that you continue to operate because by reading of this particular provision in the order that currently exists, you are falling in the category where you ought to continue. And mind you, it is not the case that if you fall in the essential services category or essential commodities category, then you can continue to have the similar number of workforce or headcount which you always had. I would always advise that try to spruce up, try to rationalize the workforce to the extent possible and ensure maximization of social distancing objective. And that's the criteria which majority of the government authorities are currently trying to implement. That's the objective with which all these orders are coming in and that's the practical nuance involved here. Now, another question which has been coming in that I may have work from home facility for my employees. I may have employees uh, who are able to work from home, but there could be different limitations especially for those companies where the nature of work is such that there will be limitations in terms of broadband connectivity, in terms of the technical specifications. It is not possible for employees to really work from home. What happens then? And I would refer to all the government advisories, whether it is Telangana, whether we are talking about Maharashtra, we are talking about the central government's uh, missive to all the states, and to the industry as such about not deducting wages, not terminating people. Uh, let me tell you, except few states, I would categorically talk about Telangana, which has issued a notification which says that at the initial 31st March 2020, so far we haven't seen uh, any notification which takes into account uh, 14th April 2020 as the date uh, up to which you need to 
mandatorily continue to pay employees uh, during the lockdown period, but at least till 31st March 2020, the advice would be from a reputational standpoint, although these advisories do not have or do not entail the force of law, at, except in Telangana, where they have tried to emanate those principles from the Local Shops and Commercial Establishments Act. And when I say compulsorily, where the employees are going to be deemed on duty during the lockdown period up to 31st March 2020, subject to any other extensions by appropriate orders, I am talking about non-managerial employees. Throughout the slides, my perspective would be that for managerial personnel, you need to rely on your own policy considerations on the employment contracts. But I would always advise all the attendees here uh, who are currently hearing me to be very cautious and avoid taking unilateral decisions and sending out communiques which can raise more doubts in the minds of people. And that is all across the workforce, whether you are talking about the managerial personnel or non-managerial personnel who fall in the workmen or blue collar category. And this is equally applicable for the services sector or the manufacturing sector, be it essential commodities or non-essential commodities. Communication is the key. Now, how do you monitor? How do you ensure attendance, work quality of your workforce? Uh, it is important that you have essential contingency plans in force. I think uh, several uh, CHROs and members from the HR community, from the legal fraternity, are currently attending this webinar. Uh, there are uh, different arrangements in place for employees to log in, log out, uh, ensure that they fill up their timesheets even when they are working remotely. For those employees who are putting in time, they have a definite project to deal with. Uh, they need to be monitored. So in that case, you may have necessary uh, communications in terms of prescribed forms or internal guidelines for employees to follow to ensure that even remotely, the human resources department or the compliance teams are able to ensure that employees are productive. Uh, they are not just relying on the fact that they can be allowed to work from home so they do everything what they want to do they need to concentrate on work for those employees who are unable to work from home the first advice would be that during the initial lockdown period that is up to 31st march 2020 at least the essential basic wage and dns allowance or any allowance which you as an industry continue to pay to those employees in terms of essential expenditure you need to continue to pay that's the advice don't immediately have headcount reduction or layoff sort of provisions have triggered in these circumstances it may be an advisory situation for all of you but also think about it from a future reputational standpoint there are advisories which are being issued uh, questions are also being raised about contract workers what to do about them uh, especially when we talk about uh, uh, companies which are engaged in exhibition business. We are talking about malls, we are talking about cinema, we are talking about theaters, where we have contract staff deployed. We are also talking about manufacturing establishments where we have contract staff deployed. Now, let me tell you, from a uh, CLRA standpoint, contract uh, labor regulation at standpoint, and from and general labor law standpoint, it is not your immediate liability as a principal employer to continue to pay wages to the contract workers, even if they are not deployed on your premises. But in our experience, the way it has been advised that at least during the initial lockdown, the minimum wages ought to be paid to those contract workers. And I'm ta not talking about those establishments which have been asked to lock it down right from the very beginning. And I'm not talking about just the last one week or maybe 10 days or 15 days. Those establishments which have been locked down for a long time now, that is malls and establishments which are set out there. We are talking about cinema halls, etc. in the movie exhibition business. In that case, you can communicate or convey the message to the contractors that it is not that we are immediately terminating unless the situation is that the contract itself was about to come to an end. 
I'm not touching upon the force majeure aspects right now, but only on the perspective whether you are mandated to pay wages to contact workforce or outsource workforce at this point in time. On the continued processes exemptions, please be mindful that anything and everything cannot be deemed to be something which ought to be uh, deemed as a continuous process, which you can assume to be continuous and carry on with it. I would advise that if there is any iota of doubt in your mind where you don't see uh, a very specific mention of your industry in the appropriate government circular or order, please read it very carefully. Please rely on those circulars. And if at all there is any confusion that you may be catering to the requirements of, let's say, a pharmaceutical company or a food processing company or essential food ingredients company, uh, it is important for you that even if you wish to intimate the government authority where you want to continue with your processes, and I'm talking about even for the services sector where you are rendering services to a banking company customer, you are rendering services to a, a, a telecom company customers, or uh, it's a business to business call. Uh, it is important for all of you to consider the fact that don't assume things. Uh, sometimes the questions have come in that I render services for customers of a banking company which is situated offshore. And the customers are all such that they are based out of a foreign country and not in India. Now, let me tell you, essential services are essential to the larger public good in this country. Don't have that kind of an assumption in your mind that anything and everything can be deemed essential. And even essential services currently are, are working at a wafer thin capacity, at a reduced capacity to ensure that social distancing as a measure is achieved even for exempt activities there are conditions which have been prescribed minimum six foot one meter distance for the workers to who are functioning on a shop floor at any assembly or production line uh, in some of the states for example in maharashtra there is something called mission critical uh, which have been advised uh, to the to essential services sector where uh, there has to be a specific mark on the vehicles which are flying carrying employees who are deemed mission critical that's provided for those employees with clear mark that these employees are very critical to the functions which we render to the essential services sector so be mindful of those uh, implications which would uh, which these scenarios or this lockdown situation would entail for you so it is important for uh, all of us uh, to consider these elements uh, when we are bringing up our contingency plans, when we are looking at uh, all the perspectives in terms of workforce management during the lockdown period. Next slide, please. Moving on to uh, one of the most important fundamental elements, uh, the questions which have been coming across uh, in the last few days uh, during the lockdown period uh, is it mandatory for me to assume that the employees are on duty now if we look at all the advisories which have been issued by the appropriate governments even the union labor ministry uh, the advice would be that at least during the initial lockdown period of 31st march 2020 uh, please consider that you continue to pay your employees uh, the wages which are ordinarily payable to them. If the question arises whether I need to pay them performance incentives, increments which is very likely to be announced in ordinary circumstances for those employees as part of your uh, annual uh, appraisal cycle, uh, there is no problem on that front. Uh, there is no issue when you have necessary communicate sent out to the employees that at this stage we are sticking on to a normal payroll cycle at least up till 31st march 2020 clear communication is the key for the employees but going forward except in a scenario where you see extended uh, periods or notifications which are set out by appropriate governments 
in the near future in the next one or two days where they tend to advise the industry uh, to continue to pay wages in that case uh, one would seek advice one would take a management call because advisories are not something which is mandatory applicable to you there are provisions in the law which i'll cover very quickly in the next uh, few slides uh, in terms of how you need to deal with the workforce and i'm talking about the non managerial personnel who are not able to either work from home who cannot be assigned any duties during the lockdown period whether initial extended or if the situation god forbid continues to exist in the near future for at least one or two months uh, some of the states example karnataka they have in fact stated that if an employee is symptomatic if he is undergoing treatment then 28 days leave over and above the existing leave entitlements have to be recognized by the employer and that's something which needs to be followed employees who are self isolating themselves because in a situation where they have returned from a foreign country uh, at the time when flight international flight operations were still on in that case you need to allow the employees 14 days paid leave over and above what currently exists for them and where work from home is not possible for these employees at least for the initial lockdown period that is up to 31st march 2020 or unless and until there is an order which says up to 14th april 2020 but i'll take it as a benchmark of 31st march 2020 which can be considered from a reputational standpoint from us from the sensitivities which currently exist that perspective that ask the employees to continue to be there uh give them a comfort that ordinary payroll can be something which can be immediately uh, uh considered to be uh, uh, a usual payroll cycle but not to immediately force them to avail the leave which currently accrue to them as well as their leave accumulation but from 1st april onwards and from that standpoint have a contingency plan in place have necessary communications in place as to how you need to convey to the employees for example in the state of maharashtra there are provision which exists where you can ask the employees compulsorily to avail the leaves which currently accrue to them which currently stand to their credit and thereafter the provisions of layoff which exists under the industrial disputes act would get triggered which mandates the employers to have 50% of basic and da payable to the employees for the subsequent 45 day period or the initial or extended lockdown period whichever is later or during that 45 day period if the lockdown continues to exist but once that 45 days period or that lockdown period gets over then it is valid or lawful for the employer to agree with the employees whether this situation ought to continue because let me tell you ladies and gentlemen it is important for the management and the workforce to agree to the premise that the circumstances are unprecedented it is not something which is ordinary and in these extraordinary circumstances the objective of uh, the industry is to either retain the workforce for the time being and not to have the total cash flow problem uh, coming on to the management such that they are looking at an immediate headcount reduction the point in point is about putting forth uh, this contention before the workforce so that they agree to the premise that they have been asked to have leave adjustments once the initial lockdown period is over from 1st april onwards they are asked to have leaves adjusted or in other states they are agreeing to have their leaves adjusted and thereafter you are looking at a reduced pay 50% reduced pay and thereafter there is a situation where you agree with the employees that i as the industry for example for a smaller setup which cannot even continue to pay them 50% of wages you can agree with the employees that in order to retain them for the time being and given the state of affairs and the extraordinary circumstances we can continue with the arrangement that you are on the payroll but it's not that we are going to pay you anything it will be deemed to be leave without pay so 
I will not put everything in the same bracket, ladies and gentlemen, but I think on a case to case basis, depending on the nature of industry, depending on the kind of functions which are existing, depending on the nature of workforce which currently exists, the advice has to be or the contingency plan has to be on the table before you suddenly start thinking about headcount reduction or leave adjustments or pay adjustments for your workforce. Now, in terms of potential headcount deductions, uh, the first question which has come to me uh, over the last few days, and of course, I'm sure it must be there uh, pursuant to this presentation, that what do I do uh, when uh, we have already planned some headcount deductions, usually as part of uh, the slumbering economy, and because of the uh, slackened race uh, in terms of customer demands. Now, in that case, my viewpoint would be that you can continue in those circumstances provided you have the necessary paper trail you already had a business plan where you had communicated with these employees or it was absolutely certain that given the circumstances not just in the covid 19 backdrop uh, you ought to let some employees go but trade it very cautiously don't make the communication absolutely unilateral or imposed uh, it is important for you to have the necessary paper trail to take it forward accordingly with that workforce for whom you, it was already planned uh, that you would let them go. So uh, planned headcount reductions is something which you can look at as a possibility, but try to avoid immediate headcount reductions in the COVID-19 backdrop during the initial lockdown period. And even if there is a contingency plan in place where you need to rationalize the workforce, uh, I'm talking about the regular payroll uh, staff, it is important for you to have appropriate planning, appropriate advice in place to ensure that all compensation, all necessary severance payments, which you ought to pay to the employees are duly calculated. And there is nothing which can come into the future as a potential claim by any of these uh, staff members as to whether you are compliant during the lockdown period, headcount reduction, or any kind of base structuring or restructuring which you propose to put on the table. Next slide, please. Of course, for those uh, establishments whom, uh, who are really certain, who are running at uh, reduced capacity, but who fall in the essential services category. Uh, the government, and we have been in touch with various uh, uh, competent authorities across districts, across uh, states. And the idea is that private sector is expected to have the employees work from home to the extent possible. But we do appreciate that there are limitations involved. However, you need to have contingency plans, appropriate plans in place from a policy perspective for the employees when it comes to remote working, uh, whether there is a perspective which comes in, a uh, question would be about those establishments which are currently situated in uh, special economic zones, whether you're able to take out laptops and desktops for your employees and associates who are located uh, in different places. How do you really facilitate your facilities team members or department members uh, to have those laptops moved out of the SEZ premises the idea would be to have approvals from the SEZ authority concerned uh, to bring out, to take out the laptops. Uh, STPI authorities uh, across the states have issued directives in this regard. There are for telecom companies guidelines in respect of work from home. Uh, if it is not possible for you in some locations to seek immediate approval uh, from the relevant SEZ authority, the advice would be that at least you have the necessary list of all the equipment which you need to remove from those premises have an intimation sent out either by email or by fax or through hand submission uh, to the competent authority to the extent possible about movement of those goods outside the premises have an intimation sent out to the local police station to the superintendent of police or the local police commissioner or dcp uh, with a list of all those individuals who are carrying those equipment in the in the concerned vehicles or the exclusive taxis or private vehicles try to ensure that the lockdown measures under section 144 crpc 
are followed you are looking at different routes which will be taken by these individuals so be mindful of those steps which you ought to take the precautions which you ought to take in these circumstances uh formulation of effective policies for remote working individuals for employees in terms of time logs in terms of attendance uh, uh registers or logs because it is not possible for all the employees to uh, record their time uh, in in person you cannot have immediate physical log registers for keeping a track of attendance so have uh, those measures in place uh, i'm not talking about manufacturing establishments because it is almost a near impossibility for anybody to keep a track unless and until we are talking about situations where within those manufacturing establishments you have design centers where employees uh, may be asked to work from home and there is a possibility for them to keep rendering productive measures uh, as far as the continued operations for designing etc or research and development is concerned uh, challenges in terms of it equipment which i have already covered uh, important is also to have remote training for these employees uh, you know continue to have necessary comforting measures for them in place so that any issues which are coming in in terms of power, power failures or uh, necessary equipment which are currently there in their custody uh, how they need to utilize it uh, i would advise in favor of having at least some support line or hotline in place where employees can reach out to uh, try to ensure that you are uh, empathizing with the workforce it is not about just maintaining productivity these are very difficult times uh, you need to be ensuring that employees are aware uh, that you are mindful of those difficulties which they can face and not just completely emphasizing on the productivity measures while apprising them that uh, the moment they have these policy considerations in place they ought to follow it to ensure that there are no additional compensatory work hours subject to the applicable laws in place across the states and across locations where they may maybe be asked uh, to compensate for those hours if at all uh, you as the employer are asking the employees to put in reduce work hours and that is another question which keeps coming up uh, all throughout that whether we can notify reduce work hours for these employees which can result in reduction in uh, proportionate salaries and the answer would be yes uh, avoid doing those or taking that measures at least during the initial lockdown period of uh, up to 31st march 2020 but have uh, necessary measures in place where you agree with the employees not unilaterally but agree with the employees seek their consent to the extent possible where employees are agreeing to the position that they could be reduced work hours reduced work days instead of five days a week we are talking about four days a week or alternate shifts for employees uh, on a regular basis and in that case it could be a reduced pay and not immediately a substantial reduction in the payment which is ordinarily made to them from time to time under ordinary circumstances it could be split shifts it could be spread out core activities for the workforce uh, in terms of transport facilities for employees who are deemed mission critical uh try to ensure that they have the necessary tags they have a copy of uh the due intimation you may have sent out to the competent authority in your district or municipal limit uh they need to have possibly and if possible uh, and i would consider it to be very imperative in the circumstances that you have communication in vernacular uh for the police personnel or ground to at least refer to when an employee is uh providing that vernacular message to them uh if you are asking that question at present that what happens if i am stopped by a police personnel or a local constable uh, who does not understand the entire nuanced approach the idea would be to the extent possible uh to share those documents with the employee uh, by the employee to the concerned police personnel there are instances we are aware of that that people are getting roughed up uh it is also important for you to consider for example if you are in the healthcare business people who are dealing with accounts people who are dealing with finance in a hospital premises uh, it is a questionable circumstances where police personnel or ground can ask you and can immediately start uh, uh, working on that premise that whether even if you are engaged by a hospital 
by a telecom or by a bank uh, banking services company whether you can be termed essential uh, in the current circumstances so be mindful of those uh, situations at hand before you tell the employee to go on the road and start convincing uh, the police personnel on ground because situation on paper and situation on ground are really different at present we expect the things to cool down a little bit to get more streamlined where local police is also getting instructions to be more sympathetic to be more mindful of the situation at hand the difficulties which industry currently faces there are advisories which are flying around at present but whether it is reaching to the police personnel or ground is a questionable perspective of course protective measures it is important for companies to have uh, remote payroll uh, processes in place to the extent possible so that at least till 31st march 2020 you don't see disruption in the payment of salaries if at all there is a problem don't let the confusion prevail in the minds of the employees that what happens at least for our salaries which we ought to get up to 31st march 2020 uh, have necessary missives sent out to the employees by way of emails by way of uh, uh, scanned documents or missives or circulars by way of office memorandum that the company is taking necessary measures to ensure that during the initial lockdown period at least the minimum wages are going to be protected so that's the kind of measure in terms of containment and necessary workforce uh, communication which i would daily consider imperative uh, in these circumstances next slide please in case of temporary shutdown where you have been asked uh, to look at a situation where establishment has been completely uh, locked down has been shut down there is no way uh, that you can prove or or establish that you are an essential service or an essential commodity uh, process related establishment uh, you can explore business continuity measures on a remote basis uh, you can have a plan for the workforce engagement i'm talking from a services sector standpoint uh, i touched upon the reduced work days work hour situation but in that case you need to have a clear uh, a bilateral or multilateral full pronged approach with the workforce where you are agreeing with the employees to put reduced work days or work hours as a perspective on the table for them to agree to in the current circumstances and let me tell you based on our experience it is not the case that the employees have an immediate uh, chance to move on however if an employee decides to resign in, in these circumstances uh, if the question is that what do you do in that case the response would be you can take on record the resignation uh, you pay whatever is the prorated salary up till that date and accordingly release the services of the employee but if if the situation exists during the extended lockdown period where there is no work at all for the workforce then in that case uh, you can assess and uh, communicate to the employee that in these scenarios where there was no work at all and we had already communicated that wages are not going to be disbursed and it is considered to be a leave without pay situation then it would be expedient for you to convey to the employee that as part of their full and final settlement the wage period will not be considered uh, as far as the extended lockdown situation is concerned for the temporary closure uh, i am not uh, really certain about up till what uh, period this scenario is going to continue but there are provisions under the industrial disputes act and you may also rely on the current certified standing order specifically in maharashtra in the union territory of pondicherry and and a uh, uh, couple of other locations where there are provisions uh, where employees will be asked to Uh, at least uh, avail the leave which have accumulated to their credit and thereafter the layoff provisions under the industrial disputes act will get triggered you need to have communication in place to ensure that this 50% of basic and da uh, uh, communication is clearly uh, made to the employee uh, it's not the case that you are mandated to pay the entire salary to the employees during uh, the initial lockdown period only uh you can continue to pay but in terms of the advisories 
the basic payroll can be maintained till 31st March 2020, but thereafter you can have a streamlined process uh, whether you agree with the employees to have leave adjustments in place and thereafter a reduced pay or reduced work hour or shifts for the employees. But the key would be to have necessary policy perspective and related communications in place for these employees. Uh, please refrain to have unilateral measures in place where you just communicate to the employees and there's nothing, there's no way where employees can also be heard. There could be situation where there are immediate difficulties faced by certain sections on employees where you need to take immediate measures to allay any individual concerns. So be mindful of those circumstances also. Advisories which are issued by appropriate governments except uh, the state government of Telangana where it is emanating by way of notification uh, for the initial lockdown period. It is not mandated by law. I repeat it is not mandated by law but advice would be that you continue to be on the regular payroll when it comes to the initial lockdown period. Ongoing redundancies, I have already touched upon that point. You can do it provided you have the necessary paper trail to justify your position when you can convince the authority in case there is any question which is raised about the practice which you have adopted that whether you are taking headcount deduction measure in the backdrop of COVID-19 or whether it was something which was pre-planned. Uh, another question or scenario is about extended lockdown or potential closures. Uh, in those circumstances, what happens to new joinees? What happens to later hires? Uh, whether you can resign the offers, whether you can defer the offers already made? Uh, the quick response to that would be that yes, you can defer the offers, you can communicate. The key would be the offer letters which exist. If the employment has not yet commenced, a joining date was communicated to the employee and I know that uh, from a human resource standpoint it may not seem right for you to say that you may be serving your notice period with your current employer but right now I cannot uh, really uh, take you in. So either it is deferment you communicate with the concerned potential candidate but even if you withdraw that offer you do not entail an immediate liability from a labor law or contractual standpoint unless and until the employee has already joined your employment and in that case you need to consider that person at par with your regular workforce not from the perspective of layoff provision which would apply to the workmen for non-managerial employees who have completed at least 240 days of service in your establishment but from the perspective of sensitivities involved but yes the employees the potential candidates who are not yet commenced employment it will not be unlawful for establishments to defer that offer or to redact that offer. Continue to have various means of uh, engagement with your workforce. Team leaders can be uh, advised to have weekly calls or at least missive sent outs. There are various ways of doing it for the workforce which are sitting at home uh, probably with no assignments at all. These are times of distress. Uh, if at all you're looking at headcount reductions in the near future, if God forbid the situation continues, then have appropriate plan in place in terms of what would be the severance payments, what would be the possible calculations or computations in place. Don't rely on the future scenarios to plan uh, when it comes to potential headcount reduction because everybody realizes the fact that somebody or the other across the industry, whether it is the services sector, or the manufacturing sector would rely on each other on different uh, establishments to continue with their business and if at all you're looking at rationalizing the workforce uh, as an option have contingency plan in place have computations in place categorize your employees look at what is essential or non-essential and be it from the hospitality sector standpoint where they could be essential and non-essential staff and if you're looking at potential rationalization or reduction in workforce please have a plan in place where you have clear segregation of who is managerial who is non-managerial don't just rely on the nature of the salaries which a person is getting because i will always caution you uh, all those ladies and gentlemen who are currently attending this webinar to be mindful of the future to be mindful of the litigations or disputes which may arise in the future so it is important for you to consider all these points 
when you look at potential headcount reduction from a future standpoint. Uh, also, in terms of any potential lockdown or closures in the COVID-19 backdrop, especially for the listed entities, uh, listed companies which are into manufacturing or services sector, uh, which are not essential and which have been asked to compulsory close down their operation for the time being, uh, I would say from at least the stock exchange or SEBI disclosure standpoint, uh, please ensure uh, that you are considering this as a material event and you are intimating the stock markets and SEBI almost immediately that you are considering your establishment to be under lockdown, uh, you know, uh, at least in these uncertainties and any particular date or resumption of operations will be communicated accordingly. So have appropriate measures in place. Uh, consult your compliance colleagues, your internal uh, uh, compliance team or corporate secretarial team or your uh, advisors to ensure that you keep sending those missives or uh, uh, necessary intimations to the stock exchanges which still continue to operate uh, under the lockdown guidelines of the appropriate government. Next slide, please. I think we have several questions uh, which have which have come in and some of the key questions which came in at the time of registration was uh, how do you manage compliances during lockdown how do you deal with contributions returns filings training obligations now uh, ladies and gentlemen these are extraordinary circumstances uh, uh, at least from a employee state insurance perspective uh, you may be aware that uh, there is a clear uh, missive or circular which has been sent out by the directorate of employee state insurance uh, that you can uh, you are you can defer the contributions you can defer the compliances uh, for the next 30 days or so and we are expecting more circulars and orders from all these organizations whether we talk about the employees provident fund organization or we are looking at labor welfare fund professional tax authorities, uh, whether you can defer the contributions for the time being, at least for the next three months or so, because this is the kind of lockdown scenario which is absolutely unprecedented. Uh, establishments are not having their staff report uh, to the offices. Even the government establishments have been advised and mandately asked to work on a very thin capacity. So it is important for uh, uh, for the industry to keep a track of those circulars. Of course, we will be uh, sending out uh, and keeping a track of all these notifications which are coming in from a compliance standpoint. But yes, there could be delays. And uh, I would not say that in those situations, you will be uh, immediately susceptible to a potential prosecution. Uh, if at all, there is any delay in filings. Uh, or uh, immediate filing of returns which are ordinarily done by you as an establishment. So we are expecting circulars from different authorities, uh, uh, you know, in terms of the regular compliances which are which you are required to maintain. Uh, I think managing different workforce sections, we have already covered this point uh, in the previous slides. So in the interest of time, I would not uh, repeat myself. Uh, but yes, trainees and apprentices, uh, if there's a possibility where you don't have anything for them because the establishment is shut down, either you extend the training period or you can send a missive to the apprenticeship advisor at the central government level or at the state level that in the current circumstances, you ought to terminate uh, the apprenticeship uh, uh, period, the trainees whom you have. And I'm specifically talking about those trainees who are appointed or engaged under the Apprentices Act. These are extraordinary circumstances, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, you know, communication with the competent authorities is also important, equally fundamental uh, in the current circumstances where you can convey the necessary message to the authorities about your uh, uh, capability or uh, I would say incapability uh, uh, to continue with engagement of apprentices at this point in time, whether it is an extended suspension of engagement or we are looking at uh, having these apprentices uh, uh, terminate the engagement. 
now the concept of fraud law uh, is not statutorily recognized in this country but i've already covered this point layoff is the situation which has been statutorily recognized if you lay off uh, uh, you know in uh, workforce because you are partially closed or partially operating then for those employees who are not assigned any duties at all who are sitting at home the layoff provisions will apply to them i repeat section 25c of industrial disputes act would be the key here in circumstances where standing orders would apply to you or you have certified standing orders at least in maharashtra uh, you can look at a situation where you ask the employees to compulsorily avail their leaves in other jurisdictions you can agree with the employees to avail the leaves so that initial lockdown period can be fully paid and thereafter you communicate with the employees by triggering the layoff provisions or agreeing with the employees for a smaller uh, small scale industries where you agree with them to continue on a leave without pay basis and not terminating them uh, questions about breach of privacy uh, to all the attendees just to let you know on the perspective of force major invocations on the perspective of breach of privacy uh, we are proposing and it is already scheduled on monday uh, another webinar which will cover these points exclusively on breach of privacy data privacy related aspects and force major consideration in commercial contracts and services agreements but very quickly ladies and gentlemen uh, a, a quick point on uh, breach of privacy uh, i would advise that uh, although it is not mandatory for employers to report uh, to the authority that uh, there is a symptomatic uh, case or an individual in your premises if you still currently are functional uh, to report such cases but in the circumstances where you are aware that one or two persons or categories of people have been showing those symptoms uh, it will be a good practice for you to immediately respond and uh, take necessary measures to keep the designated health authority uh, informed of uh, such scenarios so that you can put your establishment under immediate closure lockdown sort of a situation to take immediate sanitation fumigation measures under the guidelines of the uh, health and sanitation authorities in your jurisdiction public disclosure obligations i have covered uh, you know in terms of your uh, establishment to be shut down being a material event for listed entities so please keep uh, uh, a lookout in terms of advising have seeking the advice from your uh, competent colleagues within your company or your advisors on the contents of those intimations uh, i have already touched upon the layoff and redundancies no work scenarios emergency preparations uh, we have covered this points uh, but you need to look at uh, the uh, the perspective of uh, collective bargaining agreements which are currently in place uh, please convey to the current uh, existing trade unions so that any confusion on the status of a charter of demand which was earlier submitted by uh, those trade unions to you if you are in the manufacturing sector or otherwise you are dealing with workers representatives that those charter of demands can be put under suspension for the time being if the discussions cannot continue because these extraordinary circumstances call for minimum measures and not the maximum ones which can be conveyed in such a manner that you can execute a collective bargaining agreement in a remote location or from a remote perspective so compensatory work policies uh, one of the questions which have been coming up as challenge for the hr whether you can tell the employees that if you are right now working on a reduced capacity basis whether i can ask the employees to compensate for the reduced work hours in the near future uh the answer would be yes it is possible you can ask the employees to compensate for the reduced work hours but within the limits we are looking at uh, various situations where you have overtime caps you have weekly hour caps so please be mindful of that and don't just send out omnibus orders to your employees that you will be required to compensate have a more nuanced uh, structured approach uh, in these circumstances we'll take some more questions uh, taking a pause for another 10 seconds or so uh, we have to be selective on the questions because there are several of them which are coming in
I think the one of the questions which have been raised, which I would, which I would uh, uh, take very quickly for uh, your trainees and apprentices, can I discontinue paying stipends to uh, uh, your apprentices? Yes, you can discontinue uh, with that process, as I mentioned uh, uh, in the recent slides, which I have covered already, that uh, you can suspend the engagement of apprentices for the time being. Uh, One question which has been asked is that uh, uh, if you are in the services sector, if you are deploying your contact uh, workers on the premises and your clients ask you to uh, terminate uh, uh, terminate the contract which currently exists, then what is the liability uh, which is there on the principal employer? The answer would be from a legal perspective if the workforce is not deployed on the premises, uh, in those circumstances, you need to rely first on the contractual obligations which exist. But yes, at least for the initial lockdown period, there could be commercial arrangements where you can, uh, the parties can jointly agree to cover the contract workforce cost. But the principal employers are not statutorily liable for the contract workforce, uh, which are not deployed on the premises uh, from an industrial dispute standpoint. Yes, workforce reduction. So there was a question where due to the decreased demand, whether you can uh, work on a reduced headcount basis. Uh, the answer which I've already provided. Yes, there's a possibility, but uh, please refrain from uh, immediate drastic measures, uh, radical measures. Try to have a plan in place uh, to ensure that you have the necessary calculations, computation of severance calculations. If you're asking employees to take a head, headcount deduction to work on a reduced capacity, uh, you need to ensure that you are compensating those employees at least for those hours which are being worked. But workforce reduction have to be treaded very cautiously. I think some of the questions which have come up is about whether my establishment would fall in the essential commodities or essential services sector. Uh, I would just very quickly repeat myself. Uh, we need to look at uh, very uh, clearly and very cautiously uh, and rely on the orders which currently exist. If at all you are of the view and if you are looking at a situation where uh, you are uh, producing uh, materials or ingredients for health and sanitation products you're looking at pest control you're looking at uh, medical devices you're looking at food processing pharmaceuticals etc uh, but you're not immediately into pharma production but yes ingredients of that you can issue immediate intimation to the content authority and supporting letters from your clients or customers which are engaged in essential services or essential commodities would be the key it would be more important for having their supporting document to send due intimations to the authorities uh, so that you can cover this point and continue to operate. So I will again repeat this. There are several questions on the point that whether the advisories from the state governments are mandatory in nature. Now, except the state of Telangana, which has a notification which compulsory requires uh, uh, establishments to treat the employees who are not able to attend the work during the lockdown to be considered to be deemed on duty. Uh, other uh, states have issued advisories. It is not mandatory, but our advice would be that you continue to pay them uh, at least the ordinary salaries which are payable to the employees, not any bonus, not any performance-based incentives, or something which is ordinarily paid to them during the initial lockdown period up to 31st March 2020. 
in the current situation yes if you have been paying uh, higher minimum wages and if you intend to uh, reduce that uh, uh, that that wage it is possible in terms of having uh, the necessary communication in place for the employees where you communicate to them that there is going to be a reduction in wages not to the tune of 50 percent but at least uh, in terms of what was uh, issued to them or paid to them by way of an increment earlier Right. So one interesting question which has also come in that uh, uh, if you are if you are belonging to the essential services sector, but if we ask the employees to work from home, uh, is it mandatory that we have to function? Now, uh, there are instances where even the banking companies in the private sector are working on a wafer thin capacity, a very uh, reduced headcount. So from that perspective, uh, it is not unlawful for you to work on a reduced headcount basis. Uh, it is very much feasible ladies and gentlemen the bottom line is uh, that the government is looking at maximizing the uh, social uh, distancing objective so from that perspective if you all you are advising or encouraging your employees to work from home despite the fact that you are in the essential services uh, industry it is fine no problem at all uh, and and in the question in the scenario where uh, there's another question which has been raised that if I make all the arrangement for the employee concerned to report to the office and I belong to the essential services sector, can I treat it as a disciplinary situation where I can take immediate action against the employee? Uh, I would uh, advise you to trade very cautiously. Uh, please be cautious of the fact that these are extraordinary circumstances. Employees are also scared. They're also stressed. If you force them to come on the street, it becomes a problem. Uh, however, I would advise that you can consider that to be a disciplinary issue, a disciplinary issue in terms of insubordination, but uh, it will not be advisable that you take immediate radical measures in terms of uh, terminating the services. Probably one or two warnings uh, would be more feasible at this stage. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please try to ensure that there is nothing which comes up which can be viewed in a very uh, uh, nuanced manner in a very conservative fashion by the labor authorities in the future and i'm talking specifically from the perspective of those employees who fall in the non-managerial category interesting question which has come up that why are we differentiating between initial lockdown and the extended lockdown ladies and gentlemen i'm only relying on the orders which have been issued by various appropriate governments more from the perspective of advisories which have been issued which are directly linked for your payroll to continue and the question would arise which i am repeating myself again that for the time being the extent notifications and orders by the state governments only recognize the lockdown period up to 31st march 2020 the guidelines issued by the ministry of home affairs are guidelines and not a law which is mandatorily covering you as establishment here so unless and until there is an extended deadline related notification which talks about an extended situation where you need to extend your payroll on a regular basis i'm trying to differentiate from that standpoint that please have a regular payroll cycle up till 31st march 2020 and have contingency measures and plans in place for the situation which would exist from 1st april onwards but be on the lookout for uh, the situation uh, when it comes to extended lockdown being recognized by state government appropriate orders so i think these are the questions which uh, i have addressed a uh, couple of questions i have already covered in the last slide and over the course of my presentation so uh, ladies and gentlemen we would like to receive your feedback on this webinar uh, we will put a short poll on your screen now and we all are aware uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen all the attendees here that these are unprecedented times uh, questions will keep coming in uh, situation will 
take time to be streamlined uh, but uh, be on the keep a track of all the circulars be appropriately advised don't assume things don't uh, just rely on the circulars in terms of whether you are essential or critical service sector don't think that it is something which is essential to your business and it can be considered to be uh, something which can be uh, uh, deemed to be essential as part of your essential services sector recognized by the appropriate work orders or state government orders uh, ladies and gentlemen the poll will be available for you on the stream for about 15 seconds you can select an option by clicking on it and uh, just to remind you that you as you take the poll i also inform you that when you close this webinar a short survey will open in your browser we will be grateful if you can fill in that too it will be a very quick uh, exercise for you but as you can tell we take our user feedback very seriously it helps us as a firm to understand where we stand and how to keep getting better in terms of our contents. So I would say the poll uh, would now be closed in the next few seconds. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for the for your feedback and for the time uh, in these circumstances to attend this webinar. Uh, you will find our contact details on the screen. Please feel free to contact us, reach out to us if you have any further questions about the topics which have been discussed in this webinar or any other points you would like to discuss. Uh, the presentation and a recording of this webinar will be sent across to all uh the attendees the people who have registered for it just to let you know you bear with us uh, the team usually takes some time to process the recording uh it should be reaching you most likely by tomorrow and with that ladies and gentlemen a final thank you to all of you have a good day stay safe stay healthy thank you so much all